Welcome back to Cheryl's Workday Gourmet. Today, I like to share with you my solution to countless gnocchi failures. And no, it's not ricotta. This is good old potato gnocchi that actually tastes like potatoes. We're using instant potato mix, not simply because it's quick and easy, but because it accounts for variables that otherwise makes this dish so finicky. You see, the amount of flour called for is really determined by the water content in the mashed potato. Now, forget about questions like how big is a medium potato. Even if you measured raw potatoes to the gram, the water loss in the cooking process can be quite different, depending on if you bake or microwave, and whether you wrap them while baking. But four ounce dry mix plus one cup of boiling water produce the exact same. Very dry mashed potato with the same water content every time you make it. This is half the amount of water as called for by package instruction. On a floured surface, spread the potato out. This will minimize kneading needed to work the flour in. You can press it through a mess sieve or potato riser, or you can just fluff it with a fork. This is a very forgiving recipe. Half a cup of flour is plenty. Adding one yolk will help everything bind. It'll prevent the gnocchi from falling apart in water. Once you get good at making these, though, you can try to use less egg or omit it altogether. The gnocchi will taste more potatoey and less doughy without the egg. The dry potato allows you to use less flour. It's less sticky and easier to work with. Just toss and fold until you see no more dry flour. Because gluten requires water and flour to generate, the low water content in a potato makes this a very forgiving recipe. Even if you don't fluff up the potato and/or over knead it a little, it won't turn out gummy. Not easily, anyway. Don't go nuts with the kneading, obviously. As soon as everything comes together, roll them out and cut them up. Here's a slight upgrade. Take a few pieces of basil leaves and slice them up. You can use parsley or thyme, or any mix of herbs that you like. Work the chopped herb into the dough. And again, roll it out and slice it up. You can roll them on a fork or wooden board for ridges, but because I'm going to fry these in butter, plain pieces actually get better browning. Boil up a large pot of water and generously salt it. Drop the gnocchis in. You can gently tilt the pot back and forth to prevent them from sticking to the bottom. Avoid stirring them with a spatula early on in the cooking process, as these may break easily. Cook until the gnocchis float to the top, about two to three minutes. Meanwhile, preheat a nonstick pan on medium-low heat and melt a tablespoon of butter. As soon as the gnocchis float to the top, fetch them out with a slotted spoon or spatula, and drop them directly into the frying pan. Fry until the bottom is golden brown, and flip. These should take about one to two minutes per side on medium heat. Try to stay on the lower end of medium heat to avoid burning. Cook until both sides are nicely brown and you're ready to plate. Grate some Parmigiano Reggiano and top with a little more herb. I like serving the hot gnocchi with the chilled marinara dip. Chilled tomato sauce tastes more sweet and really brings out the crusty edges more. It also allows you to eat your hot food right away without burning your lips. Super easy potato gnocchi. That actually tastes light and potatoey, nothing like the gummy, doughy, shelf-stable gnocchis you find in store. I hope you give these a try. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. For more quick and easy weekday night recipes, follow my blog. See you next time.